Okay, so this is going to be um, section P4 of the book, and this is just part one. We're going to be breaking this section up into two parts, and um, after we finish the second part, the week after that, uh, we should be actually using it uh, in our in the in the trig class. Okay, so this one's about compositions of functions. It's uh, going to be relatively short. Um, but it's ridiculously important to understand uh, this concept here. Um, especially if you're going to be taking uh, some sort of calculus in the future. Okay, so um, we've kind of talked in the past about a function being kind of this black box that you put something in and you get something out. Um, maybe, for example, this function you put 3 in, you get 5 out. Right? And in general, you might say you put x in and you get f of x out. Okay, Well, um, what we're going to be doing in this section uh, and very soon in the trick class is we're going to be chaining these functions. So maybe I have another function called g, right? And what's going to happen is let's say I put 2 into g and I get 3 out of g. Okay, Then what happens if I chain g and f? So if I go g, I put 2 into g, I get 3 out, and then I put that 3 into f, right? And following the instructions above, when I put 3 into f, I get 5 out. Okay, so this new machine um, right there, in terms of the picture, right, this is our new machine. Uh, essentially, what happens is you put in 2 and you get out 5. All right, so that's that's what we that's what this section is about. Um, in terms of kind of a more general uh, picture, if I put x into g, then what's going to come out is going to be g of x. Okay. Now I take that g of x and I put that into f. What's going to come out? Well, f of that, right? So f of that that is g of x. Okay. So this new function is again um, x goes in and f of g of x comes out. All right, so this is called a composition um, of f and g, or g and f. Um, let, me, let me say uh, of f and g, slash g and f. Right, so the words here are not gonna be the most precise. Um, it's the symbols that we represent this with, uh, that's gonna be precise, all right? Um, the symbols is going to be, well, f of g of x. Uh, the symbol we're going to use is f circle g of x. All right. So this is the new function. This is the composition. All right. So again, this is a new function because, again, you're just putting in something and getting something out. So that's a function. And so the name of this guy right here, name of this box, if we were to give it a name, would be f circle g. All right? And the way we read this is f after g of x. Oops. Of x. All right? Okay? This is a fantastic name because it describes, or this is a fantastic way of, of describing it, um, because it, it literally tells you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do g first, right? As you can see here, we're putting our number into g first, and then you're taking the result and then putting it into f afterwards. Okay, so f after g. Okay, so normally we read left to right, right? Um, uh, but in this case, we're not doing f first and then g, we're doing g first and then f. So that's why the f after g kind of way of, of phrasing it is really useful. Um, so there's less confusion. All right, um, this little circle, by the way, in here, this should be an open circle. Um, don't use a dot. So uh, don't use this. That's not the same thing, all right? Um, that would be reserved for a different notation. So it should be F and then a, a circle like that and then G. Okay, a smallish, smallish circle and then of x. So this is the name of the function. All right, let's, um, let's actually do an example. Um, let's do f of x equals uh, x squared, a formulaic example. g of x is equal to x plus 10, right? So what would the formula for f after g of x be? Right? 
Okay, well, um, the good news is it's actually relatively straightforward. Um, you just literally, re literally remember f after g means you do g first, so g of x, and you take the result and you put it into f. All right, so it's f uh, of g of x. All right. Uh, actually, let me let me write it like this. So f after g of x is equal to f of g of x. Okay. All right. Well, if we want to write out the formula, um, one way we could do this is to say, okay, what is g of x? By our instructions up here, says it's x plus ten. So this is equal to f of x plus ten. And then we look. What is our instructions for f? The instructions for f say whatever we put in, we have to square it. So this should be whatever we put in x plus ten. We need to square it. All right. So that's our new formula for f of g, um, f after g of x. Okay, um, let's do this now. G after f of x. All right, we're certainly allowed to do this. Um, this would be g of f of x, right? You're doing f first, and then you're taking the, the result of that and putting it in as the input uh, for g. Okay, so in terms of the boxes picture, you would be putting your x into the f function first. Oh, no. All right, you're getting output of f of x, and you're putting that into the box for g, and so you're getting g of f of x ultimately. Okay. Now the important thing here is that this is well g of what's f of x? f of x is x squared, right? So x squared. What's that? Well, g of x squared. G is the thing that whatever you put in, you add ten to it, right? So I'm putting in x squared, so I need to add ten to it. Okay. So this is g after f of x, and it's really, really important to note that they're not the same. All right, they're actually very, very different. So in general, f after g and g after f are very different functions. So the, or the order that you do this in matters a great deal. All right, um, by the way, I didn't have to do it all in this order. Um, let's do g after f in a different, slightly different way. This is g of f of x. That's always the same, right? In fact, uh, might be a good idea. Whenever you see this symbol, g after f or f after g, your next step very, very likely is going to be to write it like this, g of f of x, all right, if you're actually going to use the expression. Um, but the alternate way to write it is, well, why, I, I figured out f was x squared, and I put that in there, but I didn't have to, right? So I know g is the thing that whatever I put in, I add 10 to it. So I could write this as my second step, right? And then f of x is the thing that whatever you put in, you square it, x squared plus 10. Of course, I'll get the same answer, just in a slightly different um, computation. All right, um, so in practice, uh, if we could, we could have, uh, again, again, let me write my functions just because it's been scrolled away. Um, if I wanted to calculate f after g of 7, for example, one way I can do it is to actually just get the general formula uh, up here, x plus 10, whole thing squared, right? I'm putting in 7, so it would be 17 squared. Alternatively, I could do it in pieces, right? This is f of g of 7. I can calculate g of 7. That's um, 7 plus 10, right? So that's f of 17. And what's f? f is the thing that squares, so this is 17 squared. Okay, So this is a very nice way of doing it because you're breaking down your problem into, uh, into simpler pieces. What's g after f of 7? This is g of f of 7. That's g of 7 squared, right, which is 49. And that's 7 squared plus 10, which is 59, right? So this number here is 59. This number here is actually pretty big, right? 17 squared. Um, uh, 289, right? So this is another um, point emphasizing f after g, not the same as g after f. Very, very rare for that to happen. Okay, um, anytime you see an expression like uh, f of square root of x, that's a composition, right? So here um, you've kind of implicitly uh, thought of this inside guy as the function g of x 
equals square root x, right? So this, an alternate way to write this with this definition of g is f after g of x is the same as this guy above, all right? Or if I see the expression square root f of g, f of x, right? Then this is actually also a composition because what you're, how do you ca actually calculate this expression here? You calculate f of x first, you take the result and you put it into the square root function, right? That's literally what a comp composition does. You calculate one function first, you put the result into a second function. So again, if I have g of x equals square root of x, this guy right here is the same as g after f of x, all right? So sometimes you won't see compositions literally uh, with these notations, right? The f circle g or the g circle f, but secretly you are doing a composition. And that's actually very important to, to notice those situations, um, especially if you are uh, doing uh, calculus. Immensely critical in, in calculus. All right, that said, right, that means it's very important to be able to notice when a function that you're dealing with is a composition because it allows you to break down complicated problems um, into very simple problems. So for example, um, two, let's write a function, um, let me call this h of x equals 2x plus 1 whole thing squared, right? So one thing I, I can notice is that this is actually, this can be broken down into two pieces, um, where what I do is I compute the 2x plus 1 first, right? And then I put it into the square function that squares things, right? So I can rewrite h as um, f after g of x, where g of x is equal to 2x plus 1, and then f of x is equal to x squared, all right? Um, I can always check my answer here, right? What is, what is f after g of x? That's equal to f of g of x. And again, this is almost always going to be your first step. And then what is that? That's f of 2x plus 1, right? Just the instructions for g up there. And then what is f? f is the thing that squares. So there we go, right? Is this the same as the guy I started out with? Yes. Okay. So what we've effectively done is we've broken h of x up into two simpler functions, right? If you look at the formulas for f and, and g individually, they're each very simple, right? Um, this g of x here is just a simple line. And this uh, f of x is just a simple parabola about the origin. Whereas h of x is much more complicated, right? And we know it is because we know how to graph this. This is gonna be a shift and then a, a compression, right? Um, so this breakdown allows me to study f, study g separately, and then putting them together, putting the study of them together allows me to understand h. Okay, um, let's do another one. So 3 over x plus 1 whole thing squared, right? So we can again think of this as, as kind of broken down into parts. Um, for example, I can think of doing x plus 1 first, and then what I do with that, I square that, so that's a composition. And then what do I do with that? I take 3 over that, right? So we can actually break this guy down into three pieces if we like. Um, f after g after h of x, right? And this is certainly legal. You can do as many of these as you like. And the idea is, is still the same. You're doing h first, h of x, and then you're taking the result, plugging it into g, taking that result, plugging it into f, okay? And uh, the descriptions for the functions would be h of x equals x plus 1, right? You're taking that, you're plugging it into the square function, taking that, and you're plugging it into, sorry, into the function that takes 3 over x, right? And again, you can always check your work. So this is my check, right? This is f of g of h of x. And then uh, I'm, I'm claiming that h should be x plus 1. And then g of that would be x plus 1 whole thing squared. f of that would be 3 over that thing squared. All right, and that looks okay. That was the function that we started out with. All right, and again, the power of this is that um, we now can study this horrible looking function by just studying this simple guy, a line, 
this simple guy, a parabola, and this decently simple guy, which looks like that. Okay. All right. Um, now, of course, I decided to break it down into three, right? You can break it down into two. You could probably break it down into more. You could break it down into four if you liked. Um, if I change this f of x to just one over x, uh, actually, here's a nice exercise, right? If I change this f of x into one over x, what additional function would you have to do? A, a one more composition in order to, to recreate the original function, right? The three over blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, if I look at an example like this, so f of x equals 3x, right? And um, g of x equals, let's say, x plus 10. And let's say f of x is something that we know the graph of, sine of x, right? Oh, sorry, uh, let's do h. Okay, let's think about combinations of these, um, compositions of these, h of f of g of x, right? In other words, h circle f circle g of x, right? So that would be um, h of f of 3x equals h of, um, sorry, h of f of g, so g is x plus 10, sorry about that. Um, f of 3x, sorry, uh, f is 3x, so this would be 3 times x plus 10 equals sine of 3x plus 10. All right, so actually something interesting here is this f here um, and this g here, these are my uh, replacement um, ideas that we used in the last week, right, with graphing. So this idea here is equivalent to replace x with 3x in a way. And this one is um, uh, replace x with x plus 10. And so you can see this ordering here um, kind of tells me in a way how to graph is, is kind of related to the graphing of my function, right? Because when we graphed our functions, we said the words replace this uh, x with, with 3x, replace x with x plus 10, right, in a certain order. And that's actually related to, and in fact, probably the most mathematical way to describe it is, is to describe it in terms of compositions, right? So you can see here, this guy right there would be a function that you perhaps would have been asked to graph last week, right? Or, or perhaps the week before uh, in the graphing section. So this breakdown of this complicated sine of 3 times x plus 10 into f, g, and h is actually very, very related to uh, the graphing procedure that we did. So secretly, it was the same as um, figuring out composition breakdowns, right? And of course, um, one thing you'll notice is if I do h after g after f of x, right? So in other words, h after g after f of x, um, that would be working with the function h of g of 3x, f was 3x, and then h of 3x plus 10, which is sine of 3x plus 10, right? So here, we've done it in a different order, h after g after f, as opposed to h after f after g. And we end up, of course, with a different function, right? These two guys are very different, or not very different, but quite different. Um, and what happens here is, uh, you know that from graphing, right? Uh, here we've done the replacement, the, each of the two replacement effects in different orders, right? From, from my second expression here uh, compared to the first expression up there. And what happens is your graphing is different. And that's reflected by the uh, ordering here, f after g, compared to g after f, all right? So secretly that entire graphing section was about breaking up functions into composite uh, uh, composite functions. Uh, we, we never explain it that way, um, but that's secretly what's actually happening. All right, so that's actually a very nice point of view of what's going on um, behind the scenes, right, having to do with 
with compositions. All right, um, so we're pretty much done here, but I want to say the motivation for this section, at least for our class, is we're going to talk about inverse functions next um, in the support section, and then uh, inverse functions of kind of more mundane functions. And then uh, the week after that, in the trig class, we'll talk about inverse functions of, of trig functions, which will be uh, quite messy. So hopefully this two weeks of preparation uh, will help you with the, uh, the trig inverse functions uh, portion of the class.